Hey team, Monster Models here with a blast from the past. We're coming back to the Thunderbird build. Yes, it's been uh, four something months since it was complete, but I wanna do a quick recap and just really talk quickly about the Thunderbird build and what it's all about. So number one, the most important thing was getting a gift to my dad. He loved it for his 70th birthday and thank you to everybody who liked that post and got to see him receiving the gift. Number two, the speed build. Uh, True Gunpla says this all the time, but enjoy the hobby for yourself. So. The speed build in itself was a complete adventure, and if you want to go back and watch the two-part series that I did on it, I'll break down each of the small sections that I did and where I had difficulty. So it's just to say that I hope you guys enjoy all of this B-roll, and I hope that you also try to pursue a project where you just get after it and you get it done. Um, admittedly, you know, I put a lot of my stuff on Instagram, and I'm self-conscious about the work that I put out there, but we always have to remind ourselves at the end of the day that this hobby should be fun, so I encourage you to do some speed builds, get after there, crush that backlog, and get some work done. Now let's go check out the GM build. So this morning um, has been pretty good. Um, I've had, admittedly, a lot of ups and downs with um, this build so far, but uh, I'm coming to a good point that I thought I wanted to share with you guys, specifically uh, working with Photo Etch, and then also scribing. So um, as you may or may not know, these are definitely uh, areas of improvement that I need to uh, work on. And I thought uh, holding here while I made a little bit of progress on this to kind of talk to what some of my findings are would be really valuable for, for y'all. All right, before I talk to what worked well, I wanted to talk to what did not work well. And uh, not necessarily a strike against the material, but um, a, a strike against the form factor. So I, I think if you if you go back and watch my last build vlog, I, I talked to I was a little apprehensive about using this. So I have one that's cut out somewhere <laughs> on this mess of a workbench, and I did put it on uh, the GM shoulder, and I did not like how it matched up. It was not a good fit and finish. Um, that being said, um, I did kind of like seeing the riveted form factor and some other things. I just didn't like how it, it didn't fit flush with the armor and it didn't really present a cohesive vision. All right, so we're off in the far left corner of my workbench. And um, what this is placed on is, uh, you can see my photo edge, of course, and here is a hard surface. So this is um, from my wife. I think she used this for sewing and just got a larger one. But the bottom line is whenever you're cutting photo edge, you want a hard surface. And um, it can be as expensive as what's called a glass cutting plate, which I bought but was way too big. Um, and it can be as cheap as a, a compact disc. So I watched tutorials where people were cutting this on a compact disc and I can confirm that would probably work well. Um, kind of cheaper way to go about this is if you can get like a piece of tile from either a bathroom or a kitchen and cut on that. But regardless, don't cut on your softer mat, but cut on a firm piece of mat because when you drop into this, you don't want um, your knife to go into the recesses of your cutting mat. You want it to hit a hard surface so it gets a clean cut. So what actually ended up working really well for me was I just used my uh, Ulfa hobby knife and then I have a fresh-ish blade at the tip and I just went along the edges and just uh, dropped the knife into it and it doesn't make a real satisfying click you just push into it and then you pull back and then you keep going and then you'll find uh, when you get to the end of you know doing all four corners or whatnot that the piece is removed once the piece comes off um, the metal sprue I simply uh, just used a diamond file and I just went really lightly over top of it. You have to go nice and slow because the, the burrs, once you, you hit them, once they make contact with a file, you're not gonna see kind of an immediate result, but if you're just patient with it, you'll see it peel off. And then the final piece with the photo etch that I noticed, the Xeron cutters. So when I was testing out some of the GM stuff, um, I did clip and trim some of the parts to kind of better fit uh, on the GM shoulders, and these work great. These actually cut, um, like butter. It's really this simple to get started with Photo Etch. And then to attach it to the model, I just use CA glue. So I either used um, my Max Cure, which is the 10 to 15 second one, or I use my uh, Insta Cure, and it seemed to bond pretty well to it. Um, I did do the vinegar soak on this, and I'm sorry, I kind of, I'm going out of order here, and you can see where it is um, kind of a little bit like marred, or you can see where it's gray right here. So I'm assuming that's the vinegar, the acid kind of eating that. And the reason for doing that is to make this primable. So if you take photo etch straight off the, uh, you know, if out of the box, cut this, put it on the model, and then hit it with paint, the paint application may or may not work well. So you want to, etch the metal and an easiest cheapest way to etch the metal is with vinegar that that i found i have not painted this so i can't really talk to definitive results the only piece i'll say is that i didn't want to purchase a um, photo etch primer i 
I looked online, a lot of the stuff that's sold in the States, it's, it's, I don't know, it's like 15 bucks or something like that. But it seems like it's just adding, you know, another superfluous layer when all you're really trying to do to get paint to bond to this is to etch the metal with a little bit of acid. And that's where I read the vinegar test. Now that we've talked about what would be considered traditional photo etch, I wanna show you this mad work stuff. So what you'll notice versus um, the, uh, the photo etch that we talked to just a moment ago is that this comes on a sprue, this is relatively common, and then you have what comes out of Japan, which is of course just a little bit different, but probably different in a good way. So these are actually applied via a sticker. I have no idea techno technologically wise how they achieve this, but you can kind of see that it's between two pieces of film and um, the photo etch part sits on top. So the good news is you can use, you know, a tiny uh, plier to just go ahead and scrape and pull this out. And this tool actually ended up working pretty well. At first, I used these inside points, which don't work at all. So I can, I can see the difference between if you buy like a billet aluminum one versus this $17 plastic one. The, however, is I used the longer side and it worked pretty well. So it was really just a matter of, you know, picking my part off of here and then, and I do all this, I try not to handle anything because my hand shakes. So I try to do everything on the table. Um, sliding it in here and then getting the part lined and then just kind of slowly ratcheting it down. Um, a big piece when I was bending the, the, um, the parts, I initially used my tweezers to kind of fold it over and that was an awful mistake because where it decides to bend, it'll follow the contour of the tweezer. So the good news is I just use a little piece of card right here and what I would do is I would get underneath it and I would make sure it was past this point and I would just slowly fold this over while trying to maintain an edge and this worked this worked brilliantly this worked really well and that's how I shaped the photo edge part the next piece with this Madworks stuff, it's kind of hard to see. Let me see if I can creep this guy in here. So let's see, creep in. Okay, great. So the, this bottom section, the way these are intended to work, and if you, um, I'll, I'll be sure to include a link in the video so you can kind of see the description on their, on the website. Um, I got this from Galactic Toys, by the way, on a, who's also listed on eBay. So what you, once you bend it, you'd actually bend it right here at this point, and it would create a 90 degree angle. I didn't want this portion right here sitting on the Mac. I thought it kind of takes me out of, you know, the kind of Vietnam era. This is very like future-y looking. And I also, um, I, I thought it might kind of look lazy just to have them sitting on top of the Mac. Who knows, it could be my downfall because I'll, I'll show you my process here in a moment of what I'm trying to do to get these to actually look the way I envision. So you bend it, you get a 90 degree angle. If you want to, you can take a, uh, probably a little bit of scribing tape and use it to align it, set it down in your model um, with CA glue, call it a day. Well, um, that wasn't good enough for me. So what I wanted to do was, I actually wanted to have it flush so that you could not see that. So what I did was, in one of my test runs, I took um, the same piece of kind of plastic card that I was using to bury it, and I took my uh, BMC chisel, so this is actually a one millimeter, and I just test scribed some lines. I used, um, along with Madworks, this is a huge Madwork ad, uh, this is not the one that I used, but it's very close. I just used a scribing template and I pulled um, this through and it worked out pretty well. So once I had my channel dug, I put my piece of photo etch inside of here. I put a dab of CA glue on it. I dropped it in there. I actually used um, another little bit of uh, CA glue, um, one with a higher viscosity. So it would kind of run and kind of use some capillary action to make sure it was stuck to the part. And then I took some of my uh, Tamiya gray putty and put it on top and then I walked away. So this morning I used my sanding sticks to kind of get this flush and I wanted to see how this looks. And fortunately or unfortunately, I liked how it looked. So um, this will kind of bring us full circle to where we started with this video and I'll show you an application how I'm using this on the GM. So before we push in and I show you guys the results of my scribing and using photo etch, I wanted to show you some tools related to scribing. And then another big piece to this too, admittedly I'm a new scriber and like, and scribing is super uh, intimidating. It, it took me probably a year plus before I took the plunge and got into it. So um, I'm gonna encourage you now and then I'm gonna encourage you at the end of the video to get into scribing if you haven't already. And if you're already a scriber, hopefully there's some good points here that you can pick up. So the tools that I use, I have these BMC chisel, chisels and there's BMC, there's Madworks. The bottom line is, you know, if you're ankle deep or knee deep in the community, you know these things are impossible to find. Um, just for kind of uh, grins, I actually picked this up in Japan when I was on my honeymoon before I even got into scribing because I, I knew how scarce these things were. So this is the uh, one millimeter uh, chisel tip. 
And really quickly about like um, panel line scribing, if you don't know what's what, these are made of tungsten and um, the whole gist is that you put it on here and you would drag it across your model. And I'll talk to technique in, in just a moment, but um, I encourage anybody again, who, who's not familiar with panel line scribing to dive in. So um, keep in moving this thing along. Um, I also use Dymo tape. I have the Madworks tape, it's over here. Uh, I wanted to give this a shot. I know Donnie Baxter and uh, Tim Child and Mecca live and die by this stuff. So I wanted to try an application and um, lo and behold, it worked really well. And then I have, uh, I got these decal scissors somewhat recently and this makes cutting this stuff a lot easier. In the past, I would kind of put it down and use my hobby knife to cut it. And um, that's fine, but it just adds another layer to the process and kind of slows you down. So uh, what did I end up doing since the uh, Gundam has a lot of kind of like natural uh, lines and edges, um, it was pretty easy for me to, I shouldn't say easy, but it wasn't as challenging as I would thought it'd be to, uh, to get this down. And I'll push in here and, and I'll show you guys up close what I mean. This is what it looked like in application. So I took my um, piece of Dymo tape and I simply just uh, attached it over here. It's a, the one I cut was a lot smaller and a little bit truer to the fit, but it's okay if there's overlap. And the nice part, what I mentioned a moment ago about it being quote unquote like easier, a little bit simpler to work with, if you're paying attention to the lines of the model, you can work with those versus putting down a ton of tape. So I'll give you a really good for instance, you can see that there's kind of this S line on the GM, right? Well, this is a higher level and a lower level. So what I did was when I put the tape down, I was able to employ this higher level as my backstop at the top. The trick was, um, it's kind of hard to see on camera, but there's, maybe it's easier on this side, there's a beveled edge. So I wanted to leave like a tiny shoulder, you know, like a tenth of a millimeter or, you know, a fifth of a millimeter so that I can have a nice channel. So that was kind of difficult to position the decal on this side. Um, and then down here, there's going to be uh, the, you know, exhaust or the uh, vents for the thrusters. So I only had to put one piece of tape down. I just had to block this one line, which worked out awesome because... Um, in my past kind of panel scribing experiences, especially the X29, I had to put tape down on contoured surfaces, which was an absolute nightmare for uh, a newbie scriber. So once that's laid down, um, a really big piece with the technique is you wanna let the tool do as much of the work as possible. And what I mean by that is when you put your uh, panel line scriber down, what I did was I really tried to take my time. I was slow. I made sure my, my feet were planted firmly on the floor. My uh, arms were relaxed. My, my jaw was relaxed. I really tried to check in with myself and make sure there wasn't tension all over the place. And I put my panel line scriber down, not on this way. I put it this way, but I'm just for demo purposes. And I would just slowly drag. And it really just became a very meditative process. And if I was to uh, count the number of uh, strokes that I did to get this tiny little channel, I would say offhand it was probably 30 strokes. So that's just all to say that when you're um, doing panel line scribing, especially when you're in the initial phases, when you're just kind of like, you know, breaking skin or getting underneath there, you really want to go slow and let the tool do as much of the work as possible. Another huge piece is putting it in this little cage, right? If you break down your process into kind of smaller pieces where you feel comfortable and your hands are cramping, your body's not cramping, it's going to show in your work. And I'm extremely pleased with, with how these turned out. So to kind of bring everything full circle for regarding the photo etch and the scribing, you can see where I took my photo etch piece. We talked to how I bent it um, and how I applied it. And then I dug these channels for it to go in. So the next step that I'm gonna keep pursuing this morning for the next half an hour or so is I'm gonna fill, um, I'm gonna put another piece of photo etch on this side and I'm gonna fill these little valleys with some uh, Tamiya gray putty. And then I'm gonna let that sit overnight. All right, y'all, that's a update for the GM build. As you guys have probably seen on Instagram, I am done with the build, so we're walking backwards in time through the process. But I really hope you enjoyed looking into photo etch and scribing. As I mentioned in the video, photo etch is brand new to me, but I hope this gave you a little bit of confidence if you're new to photo etch to try to pursue it yourself or to pull some of that photo etch out of your backlog. Another big piece too that I mentioned was scribing. So this is really my second adventure with scribing. My first being the X29. So much like Photo Edge, I hope that this gives you a little bit of confidence to try out scribing and there's a plethora of products. And if you've got a preferred one, leave a note in the comments because I'm sure some other folks do as well. I hope you all like this video. And if you did, please be sure you're subscribed and leave a like.
Something else that would be pretty rad is my Patreon. If you want to head over there and leave something in the tip jar, that would be super cool. Small editorial note, all of my work on Patreon is free, and I try to get on there regularly and post work in progress stuff when I'm not putting videos out. As always, I hope whatever you're doing, whatever you're building, whatever you're getting after, whatever you're doing, you're out there and you're making it macho. Thanks, y'all. I'll see you next time.